Yes, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that you reign in this place. You reign in our lives. You reign in this country. You reign, mighty God, in everything that concerns us. I thank you, Father, that you are Jehovah, the God who changes not. We thank you, mighty God, that even on this day, mighty God, irrespective of circumstances and situations, Father, you are still God. You are still Jehovah El Elyon, the Most High God. You are still Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our banner of victory. You are still Jehovah Rapha, the God who wills. We know that, Father, your will is not our will. However, mighty God, we will serve no any other God. We shall not save any other God, mighty God. We shall not run to any other God. For we know not of any other God except for you. You are the only true and living God that we know. And Father, we shall bless you forever. We honor you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I'm glad that you are here. You are logged in, watching the word. You are tuned in. You are partaking what God is about to do this morning. I know that your lives will never be the same again. I know that your lives after today will never be the same again. Because we need to go back to the elementaries of the word, to the basics of the word, to be able to deal with the current situations. Hallelujah. But I want you to know something, that irrespective of what's going on in your life, Jesus is Lord. And nothing will ever change that. Nothing will cha ever change the fact that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Today, I just want to share with you a simple word. The word of God, our victory. The word of God, our victory. The word of God, our victory. You know, since last week, God has been talking to me about fear, anxiety, and worry. Fear, anxiety, and worry that fear has gripped the world everybody is afraid but I want to put it to you today that the word of God is still the same yesterday today and forever so we do not join in the fear crusade we continue to proclaim the word of God with our lips we continue to declare the word of God wherever you are. Do not join in the fear crusade. Let the word of God be your bedrock. Hallelujah. So I want you to know that, you know, I just want us to go through the Bible just a little bit, just to make you understand who you are, what you are here on earth for, and... Um, what is it that you need to do in any situation? Hallelujah. You know, we, we, we human beings, we live in two worlds. We are the only creation in the world that live in two worlds. Two worlds. We live in the spiritual world and the physical world. We live in the two worlds. If you go to Genesis 1 verse 1, you know that I will never teach without going to the book of Genesis because... I believe that oh, the whole Bible is centered in the book of Genesis. Genesis 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The, heaven, the heavens is what? The spiritual world. The earth is our physical world. So, based on that, that should change the way you think about yourself. And 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, You are spirit, soul, and body. Meaning, your spiritual address first is where? The heavens. And your soul and body helps you to relate with your physical world. 
That's something that you have to know. That your soul and body helps you to relate with what? With your physical world. Why am I teaching you about this? I want you to understand that your victory is sealed, is done. There is no any other way. Hallelujah. You know, in the beginning there was only one world. The spirit world. Until God release the faith-filled ways let there be and the physical world was formed and there we have we started living in two worlds which is what the physical and what and the spiritual however we need to establish what is the link between the spiritual and the physical world if you want to understand that we need to go back to the master how did God create the physical world through the word therefore the link between the spiritual world and the physical world is what is the word of God hallelujah hang in there hang in there so the world became two worlds heaven and earth however before man can be placed on earth God has been releasing ways upon man he released man upon man the he released ways upon man the spirit not man the flesh he released ways he said in Genesis 127 Genesis 126 okay let us go to Genesis 126 he said then God said let us make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth so God created man in his own image in the image of God he created him male and female he created them 28 listen to this then God blessed them and God said to them be fruitful multiply fill the earth and subdue it we have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air over every living thing that moves on earth so before men I want you to understand who you are because our fear and anxiety and worry is based on the physical things things that we can see things that we can hear or things that we can dream about that is where our fear is based but i want you to understand child of god that before god can even place you in the physical world God released a blessing upon you in the spiritual world which is your spiritual address which is your main domain hallelujah so you came here on this physical world already carrying power dominion and the blessing what is blessing the ability to do that which God wants you to do I'm just giving I'm, I'm just giving you the simplest a definition of blessing the ability to do that which God wants you to do that's a blessing so many of you we have lowered the word blessing to the desires of our hearts if God gives you a car I'm blessed if I don't have a car I'm not blessed no that's wrong that, so we, we are living in the world of limitation because we are limiting the spiritual realm according to our physical senses the world that God has given us this physical world to come and dominate it is dominating our senses our senses we are, we, we are losing the power that we had before we are planted here on earth so do you understand child of God when it, the Bible says in the beginning God created heaven and earth but after he created the earth man was still spirit because God said 
let us make men according to our image and likeness. Men was still spirit. As God was releasing the word creation, he was saying to men, your link between the physical world and the spiritual realm is the word of God. It's the word. Because as you can see, I am in heaven. I'm creating on earth. Using what? The words. What was God saying? He's saying, my child, the spiritual is superior to the physical. Listen to this. Listen to this. You might have heard this a million times, me preaching this, but I'm going to stick to the basics until we get it right. I'm going to stick to the basics of the word until we get it right. We will go to other revelations, but if you understand this, you'll be able to understand the whole Bible. Hallelujah. Check here. Let's go to Genesis 2 7. Genesis 2 7. So after God has spoken to the man, the spirit, who is in the spiritual realm, he gave man the physical body to be able to live in the physical world. So understand that. Because our fear mostly is based on what will happen in our physical bodies more than anything else. The anxiety is based on what we fear in the physical world more than anything else. And then God says, and the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breath into his nostrils the breath of life and man became what a living being listen to me man became a living being he is referring to the flesh your spirit man was alive why god is not in the business of blessing dead things hallelujah when he said and in Genesis 1 he said and God blessed them whom was he blessing you the spirit man he was not blessing a dead being he was blessing a person who is alive but for the sake of the physical world man became a living being what is being the beingness of the man the existence in the world are we together your existence in the world that's what the bible said you became a living being when where in the earth so you you were alive before you were formed with dust you were alive before you were born that this is something that you must understand so what has brought you here on earth the word so what must you live by the word are we together hallelujah so okay can we just go to so when men fell I preached this before and I'm going to preach it again when man fell from grace he fell into the being <laughs> oh I, 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 I hope you can understand this when, when the spiritual man died by disconnection from God, he died and fell into the, what? the being, the one who became a living being. It's important. That's, that, that is where the crux of the matter is. Let me repeat myself again. When in Genesis 128, okay, let us go Genesis 128 quickly. I want you to put your finger there in Genesis 2.7. Because this, this is the revelation that will change your life forever. It's simple and yet so profound. Genesis 1.28 Then God blessed them and God said to them li li Listen to this. Uh, Genesis 2.7 says Then Lord formed man from the dust of the ground and breath into his spirit and man become a living being it is Genesis 2 7 
But in Genesis 1.28, it says, And God blessed them and said to them, Whom was God talking to? Say my spirit being. Say God was talking to, to your spirit man. And God blessed them and said, God was not talking to a dead being. He was talking to the bodiless you. Okay, let me... Let, let, let. He was talking to you without your body. He was talking to the inner you, the inner man. As you tell us, if a uh, first is only fact, you that you are spirit, soul, and a body. So God spoke to the spirit. He and God said to them, What was he using? The words. And God said. So the, the, the most important word is, and God said to them. And God said to me, the spirit man, before you were even given the name that you are calling yourself, God has released something upon your life. Before you can carry the same name that you are using, God has said something to you. And that something is, is permanently dwelt in the spiritual realm. Why? Psalm 119 verse 89 says, Forever, O oh Lord, is settled in the heavens. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in the heavens. Meaning Meaning there is a word that has been said to you that is settled in the heavens that is waiting for you to believe it. Oh. Am I talking to someone this morning? There is a word. And God said. And God said to them. And God blessed them and said. You know, when I think about this, I realize, oh. My flesh... When I was being blessed, you were not there. This flesh was not there when I was being blessed. This flesh was not there when I was having communion with, and fellowship with God. It was not there. So why now the flesh has become the center of anxiety, fear, and worry? Ask yourself that question. Why? Why? Because it was not there. Genesis 2.7 says, and the Lord formed man from the dust and breathed into his nostril and the breath of life and man became a living being. I want you to understand this word breath of life. When God breathed in you, what is he releasing in you? The Holy Spirit. So man was baptized. Oh, rivers. You were baptized into the Holy Spirit. Before you can do anything here on earth, you were already baptized until the man fell. Do you know who you are? Do you know the power that you carry? We cannot be ruled by the physical world. Why worry? Let us go to John 1.14. I want you to see something. Just hold it there. Just hold it there. John 1.14. John 1, Check here. Check what Jesus Christ did. After man, after the fall of Adam, the link between the man and the spiritual realm and the father was broken. Meaning we, we, we became fatherless. That gave birth to what? To the orphan spirit. And what gave birth? And the orphan spirit gave birth to what? To fear, anxiety, and worry. So when the link was broken, when men fell through sin, we became what? Fatherless. We had demands without supply. Because we were cut off from the spiritual realm. Remember, everything that was said to you, you are blessed. It was said in the spiritual realm. So when we fell from the grace, when Adam fell from the grace, we were cut off. We were cut off. We became what? Fatherless. We, be, we had what? Demand for supply. And, and what does fatherless? Fatherless will always give birth to what? To an orphan spirit. An orphan spirit always give birth to what? Worry, fear, and anxiety. Hold it there. Genesis John 1.14 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld with grace glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace 
and truth. Oh, hallelujah. So you see, Genesis 2, 7, we were given flesh. We became a living being. So the link that was broken, the word came. He became what? Flesh. To do what? To reconnect us back to what? To the spiritual realm of the Father. Because in the spiritual realm, there are three heavens. The first heaven, the second heaven, and the third heaven. I'm, I'm not going to go deeper into, 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 into the heavenlies. I want you to know that there is a heaven where there are demonic spirits. And there is the third, there, there is the third heaven where there is what? God. So, when men fell from the grace, because we fell because of the deception, we fell straight into the hands of Satan. Hence, Jesus Christ came. He became flesh. Why? To redeem us wholly. Holy. He became flesh so that we can be redeemed holy. Holy. He took us back. He reconnected us back to the, what? Back to Genesis 1, 28. And God blessed them and said, and said, representing what? The word. Are we together? Hallelujah. So now, I'm, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's a long sermon, but I will try by all means to zip it. We became addicted or what, that, that, okay, I don't think the word addiction is the right word. Addicted is the right word. We became so tuned to the physical times and forget the spiritual times. You know, there are two the two worlds of different times. The physical world is controlled by Kronos. Kronos, which talks about 24 hours, seconds, and minutes, and days, and all that. And we are conscious of all that. Even though the scripture encourages that we should number our days, but numbering our days doesn't necessarily mean that we should depend on Kronos more than Cairo. So, we being spiritual beings, we are living in two times. There are, we have two time zones. One time zone is what? Chronos, which is the 24 hour cycle, the weeks, the year, the month and the year. And also we have the Kairos, which is God's opportune moment or God's appointed time. So many a times fear and anxiety comes from when we try to control the Kairos using the Kronos. We want to control what is happening in the spiritual world using the timing of the world. I just want you to understand that. You know, you see, you, the time of the world is meant to control your physical body. In other ways, okay, can we just go to Ephesians 1? I want, you to, I want us to go to Ephesians 1 quickly. I want us to look at something that Paul has said. I hope this teaching is not too deep. No, it can't be too deep. Ephesians 1.17 says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. 18. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That is, that is the word I'm looking for. Because when the of your understanding be enlightened. You become like the sons of Issachar who understood the times and seasons. Ephesians 5.16, Paul encourages us to redeem the time. What is this? What, what is to redeem the time? To, to redeem is to buy back. Is to descend back the time and understand what God is doing this season. As you 
understand what God is doing this season. Using the spiritual time, you are able to resist the urge to worry, to fear, and to have anxiety. Why? Because your area of discernment has been taken out. You are, you are now understanding what's happening around you. Let us go to Second Chronicles. First Chronicles 12, 12 verse 32. I want us to understand who, who, who we should be. So in other words, you don't live by what you see. You don't live by what you hear. Our responsibility is to discern the times. Discerning the times, you are saying, Father, I'm in the physical world, but what time is it there? I want to align my life, my thinking, my ways with the time in the spiritual realm, not the time that I can see. Because around us, you'll be asking yourself many questions. Something will make you think that there are people who look at the physical time, they say the end is near. Let, let, let him not go there. He says, uh, 2 Chronicles 12 verse 20, 32 says of the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do their chiefs were 200 and all their brethren were in their command um, we're not going to dwell to the, to the number the sons of Issachar understood the chronological times however they were able to see the spiritual time they, were, they had the revelation of what's happening just by looking at the events here on earth. What am I saying? You need to say, you know, to wake up and say, God, what time is it for my life today? What is it that am I supposed to do? The sons of Issachar, they were able to discern what God was doing and when, you, and when he was going to do what he's doing. You see, when you know what God is about to do, you won't worry about tomorrow. Hallelujah. When you know how to discern what God is doing, you won't worry about what you're going to eat tomorrow or what you're going to wear tomorrow. That is why the Bible says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. What is the righteousness of the kingdom of God? It is when you have the right standing in the kingdom of God and discern the times and season concerning your life. We, as it stands right now, many of us are planning our lives based on the media. We are praying our prayers based on what we see on the media. We are looking at what the news are saying today and we go and pray. So imagine your prayer is being led by the news anchor. When, when are you going to have time for yourself to step aside and say, I'm a spirit man in this body. Let me engage with my father who is in heaven. That's the reason why when the disciple says to Jesus Christ, Lord, teach us how to pray. The first words were what? Our father who art in heaven. He, the, immediately, Jesus Christ took them out of the earthly realm and said, Our Father who art in heaven. He's saying to them, Don't be earthly minded, be heavenly minded. Hallelujah. So we, we cannot have prayer points being decided by Al Jazeera or ENCA or SABC News. No. We are the modern day sons of Issachar, filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us direction. We know what to pray, when to pray, and how to pray. That's who we are. And, when, and if we stick to that, fear, worry, and anxiety won't be our portion. Hallelujah. The sons of Issachar could descend. They will rightfully tell who will be the next leader? What will happen? They knew everything. 
because they looked at the Kairos moment. God's opportune time. I want, to, I want to put it to you, child of God. Don't miss your Kairos moment because of the Kronos moment. What do I mean by that? Don't miss your opportune time because of the events that are centered around the 24-hour cycle. God is not controlled by minutes and seconds. No. He's not controlled by hours, weeks and more. No. He has an opportune moment for you. There is a time for your breakthrough. There is a time for your healing. There is a time for your upliftment. All that you need to do is to stay in the Word. When you stay in the Word, you are connected with the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. Our discernment of faith will help us release faith-filled ways. What are you saying? What? Check your language. What Are you speaking lack unto your life? Are you speaking death unto your life? Or are you speaking life unto your life? It is your connection to the spiritual realm through the word of God that will help you speak right. Create your Kairos moment. You know, Jesus Christ said to the disciples, he said, please go and tarry in Jerusalem. He didn't say to them, as you tarry in Jerusalem, I want to tell you, on Friday, nine o'clock in the morning, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you shall receive power. No. He did not push them to the Kronos moment. He did not push them to the physical moment. He pushed them to obedience. Because he know that in, if they do what he told them to do, when the opportune time comes, they won't miss it. When the Kairos moment comes, they won't miss it. And that's exactly what happened. What happened? Nobody came and announced to them that the Holy Spirit is here. Because they were in tune with the spiritual realm, they knew that the Holy Spirit is here. He manifested it. He said, the Bible said, he came like a mighty rushing wind. Child of God, your breakthrough is not weaved in this physical world. No, your Kairos moment. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, I want you where you are, say, say amen. So now let us go back to our link to the spiritual world. How are we linked? You know, the faith-filled ways of a child of God dominates the law of sin and death. In other ways, what you say to yourself, which is aligned to the word of God, your body will follow suit. Let us go to John 16. John 16 verse 3. John 16 verse 3. Verse 13 I mean. He said, let's start from 12. He said, I still have many things to say to you. But you cannot hear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority. Whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Check the Holy Spirit. He will come, connect you with the spiritual world. Whatever he hears from heaven, he will tell you, he will tell you things to come. What am I saying? When you are led by the word, you are automatically led by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be discouraged, child of God. Don't fear anything. I remember 
when my son, the young man, Murendeni, was, was, when he had asthma, when he was still young, there were times that he was not breathing properly. And he was now big, too big that we can sleep with him. And he's sick. That if you believe in what you are looking at, you might think that this young man will wake up not breathing the next day. I said to God, God, we have done the best that we can do for this young man. He's going to sleep and I'm going to sleep. I know that you do not sleep nor slumber. You watch over us. And I know that you watch, you watch him over him. I want to tell you something. Every time when he was having extreme difficulty in breathing in his room, Holy Spirit will wake me up. I will go attend to him. Pray, pray with him. The Holy Spirit watched over him until he was completely healed of asthma. What am I saying? There are certain things, physical things, that you need to trust the Holy Spirit. Trust God. If you have done your best and you know that there is nothing more that you can do beyond what you have done, leave it in the hands of God. Leave it in the hands of God. Guess what? Guess what? He will guide you into all truth. The moment you surrender everything to God, the Holy Spirit takes over. He guides you into all truth. He tells you things, things to come. Why? Surrendering to God is surrendering to the Holy Spirit and to the spiritual realm. How do you take how do you take yourself out of this world? Surrender. Did you hear me? How do you take yourself out of the issues of this world? Surrender. We are worried, we are anxious and fearful because we are trying to be gods over our lives. Live a surrendered life. God has sent us, he has sent his word to enable us to do everything that we could. Remember what we said in the beginning that the link between the physical world and the spiritual world is the word of God. And I want to, I want to remind you again that when God blessed you, you did not have that physical body and the physical things that you are worried about. He blessed the spirit man in you. So if you, if you allow your spirit man to take over through the word of God, things will become the way God wants them to be. Hallelujah. You will be able to stand up and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. You will stand up and say, my God has supplied all my needs according to his riches in glory Jesus Christ even if you cannot see the supply even if you cannot see it physically you will stand by faith that it is done you will declare and decree that it is done the moment you declare that it is done you are pulling from the spiritual world to the physical world you are you are waking the way God worked let there be oh Hallelujah. First Corinthians 14 12. Let us go there quickly. First Corinthians 14 12. You are more than a conqueror. First Corinthians 1. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. He's saying, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. I, I want us to focus on desiring spiritual gifts. But especially that you may prophesy. <laughs> You see, when he say pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may do what prophesy, you should be able to be the prophet of your life. You should be able to release the words that will shape your destiny. 
you should be able to take the Bible and stand up and walk around the house and say, I declare and decree this and this is done. I declare and decree this and this is done. For it is written about this and this. I saw, I therefore say, this is done. As you desire to prophesy, the first person that you that you prophesy upon is your life and destiny. As you release those ways, you are linking yourself with the spiritual world. Hallelujah. You are the prophet of your destiny. You are the prophet of your destiny. Release those ways that are filled with life. Why are they filled with life? Because those are the ways of the spiritual realm. Those are the ways from the superior world. The spiritual realm, when everything is set and done in the spiritual realm, is just manifest in your world. Anyhow, you know, I love the way God works. I was telling someone that when, when I look at the church, when God said, I'm calling you to be my servant, I did not know that everything that we have was already prepared in the spiritual realm. God just waited for the opportune moment and released them one by one. The time that we needed a camera, he released it. When we need chairs, he released them. So, as we speak them into being, they all started manifesting. So, be the prophet of your life. So, but be sure not to be a prophet of doom. Oh, Rashid. Some people say, you know, the way things are happening, we shall all die. No, 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 no. You shall not die but live and glorify the name of the Lord in the land of the living. You should declare that. You should also declare and decree that my body shall not be deceived by any virus or germ. My body is pro-life, not pro-death. You, you should declare those words. Hallelujah. So because as the more you speak faith filled ways you are allowing the spiritual realm to dominate your physical world can i repeat that again the more you speak faith filled ways ways you are allowing the spiritual realm to do what to dominate what your physical realm let me tell you the strategy that is being used by this uh, jobless angel called satan who was fired from his job from heaven He's using words more than Christians are using words. Through the media. He will tell you the statistics. He will tell you the numbers. Everything will become so real to you. And you believe it. The moment you believe it, how do you believe it? Fear. The moment you are afraid, you believe. That's what you have to know. The moment you have fear, you believe. And when those words are released and you believe them, you have bought into the faith of the kingdom of darkness. So I want you to, I want you to understand this child of God that your lips should be filled with the word of God which is your link between the spiritual and the physical world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are no longer the sons of a fallen Adam. We are resurrected and raised together with the last Adam, with Jesus Christ. Can I just go into that a little bit? I want you to understand this. Genesis 1.28 when, when it's written that and God blessed them and said that man who was blessed died spiritually. He died. Because that, that is the man that God was talking to. But when Jesus Christ came, when, he's, when, he's, when, he, when he rose again on the, on the third day, he rose again with us. Our the spirit man was resurrected. So the spirit man who died with the fallen Adam was resurrected with the last Adam. So you are alive again. You are allowed to partake in the heavenlies through the word of God. Don't speak the language of the dead. 
the language of the dead is the language of those who are not yet saved, who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. That's their, be careful of what you say with your mouth. Be careful of what you say with your mouth. You speak life and life in abundance. That's your mandate. Hallelujah. Mark 11, 23, verse 24 says, I'm just, just going to paraphrase it for the sake of time. It says, you shall have whatever you say. Okay, let, 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 let us read it. Let us read it. No, no, no. I cannot be moved. I cannot be ruled by Kronos. By the physical time, I refuse. Mark 11, verse 23. It says, for assuredly I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believe those things he says will be done he will have whatever he says wow 24 therefore I say to you whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them you will have them believe that. So, you see, we, we, we have the license to partake in the spiritual realm. God is saying, the way I created the world, the way I, I linked the spiritual world with the physical world, you have the power to do it also. Even Genesis, God is saying, and God said, you can say, ah, and Pumulani said, and William said, and then Zako said, you, 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 you can say that. You can speak it. Because the Bible says, you will have whatever you say if you believe. In other ways, he's saying, you have dominion over the physical world if you believe. So, you have victory over the world, over the physical world through the word of God. That's who you are. Oh, I love the word of God. I love the word of God. I love the word of God. Let us go to James chapter 3. No, not James. Let us go to Romans 10 verse 8. I love Romans 10 verse 8. But what does it say? The word is near to you in your mouth and in your heart. The word of faith we preach. Check. The word is near to you. In your mouth and where? In your heart. The word we preach. What is to preach? To proclaim the gospel of the good news. So you are allowed to proclaim the gospel of the good news in your environment. I stand up and preach to my house. I say, house, you will never ever receive poverty here. You will never ever receive sickness and disease here. They are not welcome in this land. I'm preaching the gospel. Because the Bible says, go ye what? Okay, I, 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 I want you to see something here. Matthew, it's, it's, it's our scripture, what does it say? Matthew 28, 19. Matthew 28, 19. I, I, I want you to see. He said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them to the Father of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Check here. 20. Teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you. <laughs> let, us, let us go down. And Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. That's Jesus Christ. I am with you always. Listen to this. You are in this physical world and he's seated at the right hand side of the Father but he's saying to you I am with you always till the end of the world. You see, he's saying, he's saying know your spiritual address. If I'm seated with Christ, if I'm seated with my Father, at the right hand of the Father, you are seated with me also. At the right hand of the Father, you are with me. That's the reason why he's saying, I am with you always. You are in this world, but not of this world. Hallelujah. 
Oh, the word is your contact with God. I will stop here. But I want you to know that the word has got the ability to reveal things that belongs to you if you meditate upon it. Some of you are worried about your job. No. Go for the word. The word will release what belongs to you. Don't worry. That's what the Bible said. Fear not. This word fear not has been written in the Bible more than 365 times. Meaning every day God is saying fear not. Do not worry. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything do what? Give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Be anxious for nothing. Colossians 3 in closing that's why I say today we're just going to the elementaries of the word. Colossians 3 16 to 17 Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord and whatever you do in the word or deed do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ giving thanks to the Father to God the Father through him but I want you to look to, to look at this say, let the word of Christ dwell in you rich, richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. In other ways, when you are seated together with your brethren, be the one that release the word unto them. If they are not born again, teach them the word of God. When they try to uplift the name of Corona, lift up the name of Jesus Christ. When they say Corona this and this, be the one who saying, but God, but Jesus this. You know, speak about Jesus. Admonish them through the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Refuse. Refuse to fall into that grace. The wicked grace. My last statement to you, but I'll continue with this. Focus on self bring forth fear and anxiety. But focusing on the living Christ and your whole being dedicated to carrying out his will, you will discover that his spirit become the living force for your life and receive the peace that surpasses all understanding. So don't focus on self. Focus on Jesus who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, thank you for making us understand that we are in this world and we are not of this world. Thank you, mighty God, that fear, anxiety, and worry are not our portion. Father, thank you for reminding us our link between the spiritual world and the physical world, the word of God. Heavenly Father, I thank you that we are resurrected with Christ. Therefore, Father, we can proclaim boldly that we are seated with him in heavenly places, far above all powers and principalities, might and dominion. We thank you, mighty God, that you continue to enlighten our spirit, man. Father, teach us to number our days according to the heavenly times. Heavenly Father, ignite in us the spirit of discernment so that we can know how to redeem the times. I thank you, mighty God, that fear, anxiety, and worry are not our portion. For in you we live and move and have our being. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Keep praying. Keep taking Holy Communion every day, every night. 
declare the word of God, I want to put it to you that every, every Wednesday is city Department of All Nation Family Prayer Night. I want all the families, 8 o'clock, let us all not miss this. 8 o'clock, let all families gather together. Let us pray in unison, taking Holy Communion. Together, pray and declare the word of God over the lives of your fellow brethren, over your families, and over the church. From, from, to, from this Wednesday onwards, every Wednesday, 8 o'clock, is, it has become City Tabernacle of All Nation Family Prayer Day. We shall all be praying. Not that all these other days you don't pray, you'll pray only on Wednesdays. No. I'm saying on this on Wednesday, every Wednesday, we are praying in agreement. Thursday, we are watching the Word of God online. Please don't forget to stream in, stream in, encourage each other, share this Word. Because these are the simple elementaries of the word of God. God bless you. We love you so much. Don't forget. Please don't forget the account numbers, your tithe and your offering. You, I know that most of us are not coming to church. The account numbers are there on our Facebook page. Use them so that we can keep the church running. God bless you. Amen and amen.